is worthless artificial gold, which if it succeeded would facilitate a lot of illicit activity. Now that is not something I think the world needs. And the fact that it's clever computer science doesn't mean that it should be widely used and that respectable people should encourage other people to speculate in it. Bitcoin reminds me of Oscar Wilde's definition of fox hunting, the pursuit of the uneatable by the unspeakable. Well, that sounds better than what I used before. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just really interesting to watch these people kind of uh, troll cryptocurrencies and make this kind of insight when um, they're obviously Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are past their prime. Um, they're welcome to have these opinions and I'll play the other uh, interview in depth. Um, it's going to be Bill Gates, uh, Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett. And it's just really interesting to see what they have to say. Um, I find it comical because um, they're great investors and they've made a lot of money. So they're smart. I don't want to take anything away from Warren Buffett, Charlie Manger, Munger, and Bill, Bill Gates is also a genius. And uh, his take on crypto is not as bad. But it is really interesting that these people created their wealth in a completely different era. The 1950s and 60s, creating wealth back then it is completely different than how you have to create wealth today. And let's just be honest. Um, there's some great Max Kaiser videos. Um, if you haven't had a chance, I've shared it. But Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, like their strategy has just been backing monopolies. I mean, that's their main investment strategy is they've been able to find big companies that have quasi monopolies and they use their investment power and political power um, to get away with stuff. And, you know, Wells Fargo is a perfect example where they committed fraud and crime and they basically, you know, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger got to keep the profit. So it's just really interesting that these guys are huge investors in Wells Fargo who uh, basically had to give $200 million to have their CEO leave as like punishment for stealing money. And they're sitting here calling cryptocurrencies, you know, fool's gold and a scam and blah, 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 blah. When, you know, the actual company that they invested in, which they profited on, scammed people and uh, they were fined, you know, the government actually fined Wells Fargo a large sum of money. But for Wells Fargo, it's just a slap on the wrist and they will continue to make billions of dollars. And committing crimes like that is like actually a great strategy for banks like Wells Fargo because they get to keep the profits. Yeah, they take a little PR hit, but whatever, Warren Buffett gets to go buy up more of the cheap stock and they continue to make money off people. So anyways, I'll be posting another interview that goes more into depth and kind of goes over it. I just wanted to go on this rant about how hypocritical they are and how basically uh, they're so quick to dismiss cryptocurrencies, but yet they themselves have invested in legit scams, have made money off of legit scams. And I would love to see them make their wealth <clears throat> if they had to start over in this era. If they uh, war you know, take Warren Buffett and Char Char Charlie Munger and just fast forward them where they basically, gra instead of wh whatever they graduated college, instead of gra graduating college in like 1950, they get a degree and they graduate in 2018. I would love to see, uh, and obviously you can't do this, but w Warren Buffett would definitely not be the great Oracle of Omaha if he was born in this era and let's let's throw on some student debt too because they didn't have any student debt in that era but anyways um, uh, look out for the other video leave your comments uh, thank you for watching and I will talk to you guys soon